Nonstop local news for Maryland, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. This is News Channel 8. It is nice to have you along as if the weather isn't a bad enough lead story in this hour. How about the Washington Redskins and their non-performance uh, uh, yesterday? ACL That's the coach. He's meeting reporters. Um, something he can and let's play listen. With, if you can deal with uh, a little bit of soreness. Everybody else should be okay. Jay, you reached the point of the season where you start to recalibrate your goals. Obviously, you had goals at the beginning of the season, mm -hmm. but I would imagine some of them now are starting to look out of reach. Have you present what you're aiming for for the rest of the season with your team differently? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, you have to reestablish some goals. And uh, one thing is our work ethic can't change. It can't waver uh, no matter what your record is. We have to continue to work hard and prepare hard because we think that ultimately that will pay off in the long run. And uh, we have to continue to compete. And the uh, biggest thing is, is we want to make sure we find a way to get better at the end and continue to get better. Right now, we took a, last week, yesterday, we took a major step backwards uh, towards regression. And we got to figure out a way to make sure we continue to show some improvement and uh, put yesterday behind us and figure out ways that we can get better so we have something to feel good about as we uh, finish the season. Jay, is the plan for Robert Griffin III to start on Sunday? That's the plan, yes. Is there any, has there been any conversation yet that if Robert were to go out and have a bad game on Sunday, that you guys would pull him? It's, uh, you know, same thing. You know, we don't anticipate bad. You know, we anticipate good. Bad happens sometimes like it did yesterday. It was uh, not good, but uh, we anticipate him having a bounce back game and playing well. And then, uh, but we'll take uh, each game for what it is, his own entity, and move from there. But we have total faith that Robert can uh, bounce back and, and make some throws and get us a win. Jay, you mentioned guys working hard. On Friday, you saw the guys in there playing basketball in the locker room, and it gives off the impression a little bit that maybe things aren't going so seriously. Do you still think that these guys are coming in here putting in all of the effort that they need to? I mean, even yeah, I do. I mean, they're history. playing horse in the locker room when practice is over. Yeah, uh, that's when practice is over, practice is over. When meetings are over, meetings are over. Whether they go home and play Xbox or uh, study tape or have dinner with their wives and kids or have a quick game of horse before they leave has no uh, uh, reflection on how they perform on Sunday. You know, once the meetings and practice is over, they are free to unwind however they see fit. Even Jason Hatcher said yesterday that with regards to last week's practice, he didn't, he didn't want to talk about it, whether that was he wasn't pleased with it. Did you notice anything about the week of practices last week leading up to this game that gave you any kind of concern? No, no. I thought uh, guys moved around okay. Jason, uh, you know, did some good things early in the week in practice. And, uh, you know, it was uh, a decent week. I thought the tempo was pretty good. I thought the effort was there. I just uh, didn't, it didn't carry over to Sunday for whatever reason. Uh, so we just got to make sure we continue to uh, – monitor our practices, make sure the tempo is good, make sure the fundamentals are sound, and uh, continue coaching these guys up and not let anything get swept under the rug if things go wrong. And maybe we did that too much last week. I'll go back and watch it and see. Jay, uh, last week Deshaun Jackson stood up in the locker room and um, tried to rally his teammates around Robert Griffin III. Today he had a message on Instagram in which he said, you can't do epic stuff with basic people. He, he didn't it, it wasn't directed at anyone in particular, but when a message like that comes out after a loss like that, do, do you need to feel the need to address that with Deshaun? Yeah, I, you know, I addressed a couple of the messages today that got uh, turned around a little bit. I don't know exactly know what Deshaun meant, but uh, I think he was frustrated a little bit with what came out about Robert. And uh, I think one of the headlines was Robert throws team under the bus uh, was one of the things that I read. And uh, Robert, whatever he said after the post game, got uh, twisted around a little bit. And uh, I addressed it today in a meeting room. And, uh, you know, it's our job in-house as players and coaches to make sure we say uh, the right things and, and uh, not let that not let your words get twisted by the media or anybody and uh, not, not give anybody an opportunity to do that. Otherwise, it'll be he said, she said things, and there'll be Twitter wars and social media events that uh, will get out of control. And uh, we got to put a stop to it now. When you looked back at the way Robert played yesterday, you said you couldn't quite put your finger on. You had to figure out what was holding him back. What did you see? Um, was it just more of the same? Was it a different type of struggle? Yeah, just, well, just from Robert's perspective, you take everybody else out of the picture. Um, 
Robert had some fundamental flaws. He did. His footwork was uh, uh, below average. You know, he uh, took three step drops when he should have taken five. He took uh, one step drop when he should have taken three uh, on a couple occasions, and that can't happen. He stepped up when he didn't have to step up and stepped into pressure. Uh, he read the wrong side of the field a couple times. Uh, so from his basic performance, just critiquing Robert, it was not even close to being good enough to what we expect from that quarterback position. How is that possible that at this point in his development, in his career, that he would have that sort of fundamentally flawed game? You know, uh, I think, uh, you know, sometimes once the game gets going and, and uh, the adrenaline starts going, sometimes you see things that maybe aren't there. You speed things up when you shouldn't speed things up, and uh, you feel a sense of urgency that isn't quite there. You just have to play with a little bit greater poise and uh, continue to rep these things out. So when you take a drop from when you – catch a shotgun snap or take a drop from under center, that should be the last thing you should think about. That should come natural. And right now, for whatever reason, those aren't coming natural, and that's on us as a staff. We've got to make sure we make it as natural for him as possible. Is that what happened? The interception, is that sort of what happened there at all? Or what did you see with that one? The second one? The, the one that was returned for a touchdown where the linebacker just read his eyes and pops through. Read his eyes, yeah. yeah. That uh, particular play, he's got to keep his eyes in the right place, and he stared down the receiver too long, and the linebacker did a great job of reading it and flowing into uh, to the passing lane and made a play. But, uh, you know, he understands that in that type of coverage, he's the free player that he has to control with his eyes and then uh, throw accordingly. But uh, he stared down Pierre a little bit too long, and, and the linebacker made a play. When, when Griffin looks at those fundamental flaws on tape, the drops or whatever the issues might be, how does he receive that information? Is he is he open? Does he? I mean, is he seeing the he's same open. thing on tape? He's open. He's absolutely open about it, and he understands he didn't play his best game. He's very frustrated with the way he played. Obviously, um, there's a lot of things he could have done better to help us win. Um, just talking about Robert and. Uh, he has to be receptive. Uh, that's just part of the position. You got to be able to get coached and understand that when you make a mistake, you have to uh, learn from it and not do it again. Jay, on the um, on the second Mike Evans touchdown yesterday, you had said about the double A gap blitz. Who was responsible actually for blitzing that A gap? Was it Keenan and or Perry? Because both dropped out, and I'm just. Guessing. Yeah, based on the blitz that was drawn up, it was, uh, you know, Perry's supposed to blitz. There was a little confusion there, and, and Keenan was supposed to cover the deep middle, and we were hoping that uh, based on the pressure that Josh would not have had that extra three hitches to drop it deep to uh, right. Mike Evans. So, so. so is that basically because they had the three receivers to Keenan's side? Uh, and that's I think probably was, uh, the uh, coach expected that it was going to be a, uh, a tense meeting between the beat writers and broadcasters. And the head coach, and it has been, as you heard, a couple of pointed questions in there. First about practice, a uh, game of horse that broke out in the locker room after that. The coach said uh, what happens when practice is over is on the players. And then about Robert Griffin III's uh, relatively, well, it's a bad performance by any objective measure yesterday. And he, was, uh, uh, he got called out by the coach uh, in front of the writers for uh, some of his misdeeds yesterday during the game. Not the nicest post-mortem, but it was, by any objective measure, a terrible game yesterday in front of the home fans, uh, many of whom had left by halftime at FedEx Field. Live coverage for you here on News Channel 8.